how do you ask somebody to leave a property as a security officer? That is the topic of today's video. It's something that security officers get asked to do almost on a daily basis. I think there's very little training um, that goes into that. I think when you don't train officers on how to do that, it can sometimes come out aggressive, get out of here and not do it. So today we are talking about asking somebody to leave a property. We're gonna give some tips, um, some things that we've seen over the years that worked, um, talk about how we train officers, and then we're actually gonna go down to our training room, use the video simulator and do a couple of these things so we can see it in live action. If you are a security officer looking for some tips on how to ask people to leave a property, or do you manage security officers and need something to train them on or offer some tips, this is the video for you. Hope you enjoy it. Quality trained security officers and virtual officers. Welcome to the Titan podcast. Ryan Smith here with Josh Leon. Today we are talking about how to ask somebody to leave a property or how to remove somebody from a property. This is something that comes up quite a bit with security officers. I think it's a duty that is asked of them regularly. I think it's a function that, um, that, that happens a lot. I also think there's very little training that goes into it industry-wide. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say it's our most common call. Right. You know, other than your daily, you know, maintenance, uh, uh, you know, fire, flood, or blood kind of warnings as a security officer to, to property management, I would say we don't, you know, the, uh, a property manager or management not wanting somebody on their property is our most common call. And so and that's that, we that, deal with Yes, them. that either yeah. comes from the client or, you know, maybe they're on property and somebody, an employee of the client says that person needs to leave or yeah. can you go check that? Or they're doing rounds, they observe something and they say, I need to go contact that person and ask them to leave. Sure, you just know they don't belong here. Right. You, you know, a, a, hey, business hours are over, or property mm -hmm. hours are over, whatever the case may be. They have no business on the property. Um, they're not obviously shopping or utilizing the store, the, the restaurant, whatever the case may be. Right. And, and you're having to ask them to leave property. And I think... I mean, I think that if, if there's a lack of training or somebody isn't shown how to do that, what I see a lot of times is the aggressive, because too, when that starts to happen, then eyes get on you and yeah. things start to watch and see what they're doing. And that can come out aggressively sometimes. I, in my point of view, I think the communication, the empathy side of things, and how do we do that in a way that, that gets done what we want to get done without escalating it yeah. is probably the key to it. And, sure. and you talk a lot in training. One of the things we say is, you know, a text message from your significant other that says pick up dinner is very different than a text message that says, hey, honey, do you mind picking up dinner on the way home? Sure. Think yeah. Especially results. especially considering the day you've had. You right. know, if you had a shit day and you just see the, the one line demand of, uh, of pick up, you know, dinner. That's not going to make anybody happy, and and that's you know we teach that de-escalation training uh, for our officers and also for you know for private clients and stuff that want us to do that. We've done it for doctors, we've done it for nurses, um, and that tone text message has a tone. Right. I mean, uh, email has a tone, and and we we got to pick up on that because we communicate three different ways: body language, tone, and the actual words themselves. Body language is the biggest piece. The tone is the second, and the words is the third, and. Um, I guess when, and you'll see this when we go down and into the training room and, and what we really try to coach on, the number one thing that I would tell our officers or anybody working in our field is go ahead and take an ugly victory if you have to. And what I mean by that is this right now is a subject refusing to leave property. Mm -hmm. If you make physical contact with that subject or this thing deteriorates, now it's become a worse call than it was to begin with. Right. And, and, and so don't be afraid to have an ugly victory, meaning we do not want to bother metro police departments with small calls such as you know subject refusing to leave property. They have enough to do. They're right. short staffed, just like we are. Um, they're dealing with violent felons. They have a lot going on, and so if we can make this work, we want to we want to get this victory ourselves. But the want to do that cannot drag us into a use of force scenario or anything like that on somebody who's sitting on a curb line saying, you know, no, I'm not leaving. Right. That that is that is the worst loss that we can have. Is we had somebody sitting not doing anything yeah we don't want them there and property management doesn't want them there but they're really not doing anything at least 
at its worst, leave it at that. Don't escalate it to where it well, gets Well, and worse. that's the one that makes me mental is I've asked you to leave. You're trespassing. You don't do it. And so now I'm going to handcuff you and keep you here. Yeah. Where's the sense in that? Yeah. Right. I'm prolonging. the. And our, if, if you wanted our nutshell of our training edict or principle to our security officers, it's make the bad stuff go away. Right. Let the incident end. Don't right. prolong it. So let's walk through that. You, I mean, that's a common one. Homeless is one. I think the two common are you've got somebody that's not supposed to be on the property. They're loitering. They're trespassing. Um, they're not patronizing the businesses yeah. or that type of thing. Um, I and, got a, I, and then you've also got the refusal to leave. Yeah. They're upset. Hey, I, you didn't, whatever they're mad at the business about, sure. and they feel like they should be there. Yeah. Walk through what's the tips or how would we train somebody? I mean, the initial contact, and we know kind of the professionalism and the empathy side. I think we can show that a little bit when we're in the training simulator. But kind of what are the steps or what are the things to think through when you're starting to initiate that contact? So let me give you a bad scenario and uh, by an officer near and dear to my heart who I love to death. And so I don't think he'll mind me walking through this because he would never do this again. You know, he had to be corrected on it. And then I'll give you how I coached him and made things better or we got things better. So our officer's on property, he contacts somebody in a vehicle. This is a vehicle, okay? So he's somebody on a vehicle, let's say apartment complex, and he's not supposed to be there. He doesn't have the proper tag, he doesn't have the proper sticker in the window or whatever, but he's not supposed to be there regardless. Right. And I'm paraphrasing here. Mm -hmm. The officer walks up and, uh, and, and, and he knocks on the window and the guy rolls down the window or you know hits the button or whatever. And the officer says, hey, sir, I, uh, you know, what are you doing here on property? The answer is not sufficient. Um, I'm hanging out or whatever they, the, the, the case may be. Well, hey, you know, property management does not want people loitering here. I'm going to need you to leave property. Well, um, this subject in the vehicle flips our officer, double kick stands or gives him a nice F you or, or whatever the case may be. And our officer backs up and then reapproaches and 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 it gets worse and then now the they classic pissing contest absolutely i told you to leave yeah. they said no yeah. <laughs> and now it's on the ownership it, of the security officer yeah. to go no 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 yeah f you yeah yeah and right. so and so he goes back up a second time and it gets worse and so then he goes back and then he goes up a third time and by the third time the guy puts the car in reverse if i'm recall this is years ago but I puts the I car know in reverse. exactly which one yes you're and about. he bumps into him and it causes all this <laughs> all this heartache so i bring him in i love this he kid bumps into him with the car yeah yeah right. yeah yeah so I bring him in and I, I just love this guy to death. And the best thing about this officer is he's his own worst critic. He's self-reflective and he knows where he could have done better. Mm -hmm. And I look at him and I said, let me give you a scenario of what you did. You walk to the refrigerator and you open the refrigerator door. You look at the gallon of milk. You look at the gallon of milk and you see that it expired a month ago. So then you set it back in the refrigerator and you shut the door. Then you walk back to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator door, and then you smell it and it smells like death because it's a month expired. So you close it and you put it back in the refrigerator. Then you walk back in the refrigerator again, open it and you take a drink of it this time. <laughs> right. and, and the thing of it is, he was like, I know. And that's what it was. Right. It, it, it's, it's showing us everything we need to see that this is not going to go well, right. that this is not going to go well. And so my very first instruction is when somebody is flipping you double kickstands and giving you F you after F you up one side of your body and down the other, let's not approach them anymore. Right. Let's get away from them. Well, yeah. And that, in my mind, right. it would have been, I've asked this person to leave. They said, no, the next option is let's call the police. Yep. Let's let them come. Cause they have the option of, okay, you're going to be handcuffed and you're going to go. And typically that's what ends the incident. Right. Because they know they're not going to win that battle, so sure. it goes. Yeah, and, and, and when they see the fact that we're willing to wait them out. Right. So let's take it back. Let's take it back to the initial double kickstands and the FU that that officer engaged in, or that, or that the subject you know threw at our officer. If there's still a way to contact, meaning the person's <clears throat> window is still down or something like that, what I would have wanted is that officer to back up a few steps, get we, we know the, the oven's hot, so let's back away from it, all right? And so, and that's where we start asking some questions. Man, do you, do you really want to wait this out with me until PD gets here? Because that's, that's my next step. With right. you not leaving, that's my next step, is I got to call PD. Which is very different than 
get out of here. I'm calling the cops and, yeah. and turning it into that fight. And and I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. But I, prior to leading up to that, that's where I think the communication piece is. How we initiate that contact and how we're communicating is crucial for a couple reasons. One, it sets the tone for the rest of the conversation. Sure. And I think that how we we say it can maybe get a better compliance then because once you're in that fight, it, it, everybody's getting wet. That's, that's right. It, yeah. It, it, it's the problem from there. But let's pick it up from the point where we've, we've made the contact and now the person is said F you, I'm not going anywhere. Right. Okay. So if I can still make verbal contact with this person, you know, whether he's got the window ro- rolled down in the vehicle or he's on foot or he's on a curb line or whatever the case may be, that's when I'm going to, when I know this oven's hot, I'm going to back away a little bit and say, dude, do you, I mean, do you really want to go through this? You want to go through a citation or you want to go through an actual written tra- uh, trespass by a police officer? Do you want to go through a transport if you got warrants out? That's another one. Do you got warrants? Right. Are you on paper? Because right. you don't want this contact, dude. Right. And I don't want to have to wait here with you to go through the contact. I want to go do my thing. You want to go do your thing. I have uh, a former officer. He had a great one, fantastic one where we would have people drinking in our bus stops and he would say man that beer looks fantastic i'd love to have one i'd love to have one with you i can't have one here love and it. neither can you love it i'm beautiful it. that's chess that, yeah, that's playing that's, that's the difference between yeah chess and checkers yeah that's that, that that's playing chess and, and, and those type of things sometimes if you can get by the initial barrage of the fu's all right because you may be picking that conversation up while the the client, the customer, somebody else has spun them up and you're walking into right. that situation. Right. How if, do you calm it down? If you can get by the initial barrage and FUs, and this might even be one of the scenarios we picked to show in the training room, you know, there's one guy who throws a barrage at you a little bit, but then as you, as long as you're using good verbals with him and stuff, what you get to is he'll say, I just want to go home. I just want to yeah. go home. I know it's and, what yeah, about. and what I tell our guys in class, guys and girls in class, I said, as a security officer, if you hear, I want to go home, I don't want any trouble, I just want to get out of here, that should be like a winning lottery ticket oh, yeah. because that is your problem willing to go away. Right. That That's your night getting easier. And then, you know, help them. Call Uber. Call a cab. Uh, advise them that, you know, our transportation system here in Kansas City with the buses is free. I know that's not everywhere, but right. it is here. And so think of those resources. Well, I, I, I don't have a place to live. Hope Faith, uh, City Union Mission, all these different places. You know, have those resources on board where you can give these these things. And that's, you know, that's true, And I, you know, that you brought up. They may have just got MF'd up and down one side by property management or by somebody else, and now you're catching them hot, okay? Well, that's the th- thing that we used to do as police officers. You have one police officer, he's contacting somebody, and it's real hot, and then you switch it up, and then you have a better rapport with somebody. And, and, and so we got to look for that winning that winning formula to get them out of there. There are going to be some people who are like, I ain't going. I just I just And that's that's when you involve the, yes. the police. And, yeah. you know, to Chris Voss, the FBI negotiator, talks a lot about calibrated questions and how do we get, you know, he talks about the late or the uh, late night DJ voice. When somebody's really upset, it's slow, yeah, very melodic, you know, and not because if you engage in that with them, then you're in that tit for tat. The other thing he talks about quite a bit is avoiding why questions right. and getting more how. How can I help you? How can I? How can I? What, what needs to happen for and you partner, to leave in that instead type of, thing? of I or you? We. How right. can we get through it? You right. know, and using that positive language, this is this is us. This is an us problem. How how can how it's a problem for me because you're on my property. It's a problem for you because there could be some consequences that come with it. There could be some teeth. Right. So how can we get through it as a, as a team? And 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 that's that's you know. And I know that sounds a little soft or whatever, but the yelling and screaming ain't going to work with this guy. Well, and the communication style thing is, I think, one of the biggest things that doesn't get addressed because some people just don't have that in their toolbox to go that beer one that you talked yeah. about. They And for me, getting a couple of those things in your toolbox, I had when I was in college working in uh, bars and doing that type of security, there was an older guy who always, when he'd had to kick somebody out, he would use the 
I, I can't hear you. It's loud in here. Step outside <laughs> with, with me. me. Come, and yeah. it was genius. Yeah, we talk about that at range. And yeah. it works quite quite well. Now, you, you know, I mean, that's not going to work in a, in a more quiet. But are there a couple of those things? Like, we've got a new officer that's got to go make that contact initially. Are there some openers or some things that that you know stick out like that that are good ways of making that i tell them to test the waters if 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 i say you know hey sir how we doing and he and i get an f you and maybe i want to lead with dude next time maybe i want i I say change the language you know change don't don't just keep we get in a thing called a verbal loop uh, our cops are getting all the time with hands 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 show me your hands 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 we get that yeah freeze 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 and we get in that verbal loop and it, it just locks us up. And and what I I will tell guys when I'm coaching them is is hey if you know if that sir didn't get you anywhere you know you might want to try some something else. There was an officer who I was interviewing and his big was Bud. Hey Bud, what are you doing? Some people might not like that. Right. Yeah, you might be in the wrong neighborhood for that or that that doesn't. Now the, the other one that's another one that that Chris Voss had was getting the first name. Yeah. And going, that's like, hey, that, I'm that's Ryan. Like, how are you? And then you get yep. that. And then when you're throwing that name with them and going, Josh, how, I know this. So how does? How, how can I help you? Do you need a ride anywhere? Can I get somewhere? And I personalizing stole that, that. I stole that from old man Leon. And, um, I, and my dad was huge on saying your first name. Yeah. Say your first it name. It is disarming. Yep. Because if I walked up to a car and I said, Hey, I'm Josh with the police department. It's almost like, oh, you're Josh. You're not Officer Leo. You're, right. you're, you're Josh. Right. You know, and, and, and so there's something disarming about it. I'm a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in a, a well placed dude. I'm a big believer in a well placed man. Uh, um, I'm I, I'm a fan of that stuff. Now I know, in in, in today's day and age, you, you have to be careful with your words and, and 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 not offend anybody or anything like that. But you know, if it's not offensive to you and you don't feel like it's going to be offensive, I'm not opposed to using things like that. It, right. th- those have worked very nicely for me. I just think that you don't ever want to throw your hands up and there's, there's nothing I can do about it. He's sitting on the curb. Right. You know, you can keep talking to him, talk right. to him from a distance so it doesn't get any worse right. and, and, and keep your distance from him and, and continue talking to him. Give resources, try different approaches. Um, we do it all the time. Uh, we just, I just got back from range a few minutes ago and what I, we had somebody struggling with anticipation. Well, anticipation is you trying to guess when that gunshot's going to go off. That's what and, I do. Yeah. I shoot low into yeah, the yeah, left because yeah, yeah. I'm pushing down. Yeah. On Cause it. it's going to go off now. So yeah. what we do to rewire that is we have them talk through things in their head so they're thinking about the instruction and not the bang. Right. Well, you're just rewiring stuff. And if I get a bunch of FUs and I get a bunch of leave me alones and double kickstands on my initial repro- approach, I'm going to rewire this as, hey, dude, here's the consequences. Right. The consequences are you and I are going to sit here for 55 minutes until the police department shows up. I'm not going to get my job done. You're going to be stuck here, you know, talking to me or staring at me. You're not going to be able to do the things you want to do. And if you got warrants or if you're on probation or parole, if you have any other outgoing issues, when the cops show up, they're going to run your name. You're going to have to deal with those as well. Or on the plus side, you can just, you you can, there's a bus stop right there. The bus fare is free. Go ahead and jump on a bus and get on out of here, man. You know, and, and, and there, you know, that, that just giving them those options, I think can really change because I said so. It's, if you go it's with breaking the, that loop of the of the of the pissing contest yeah. because yeah. if the other person wants a fight, don't get baited into that. No. And how do you get through that? Well, another one I was thinking of, well, too, and they're both still the, the the Chris Voss thing, but I think it's all such great stuff. But no oriented questions. There's a power in being able to say no as opposed to yes. So framing a question instead of saying, "Would you leave the property?" Would you be opposed to? parking over there or right. leaving hey i'm just sitting here reading the paper well would you be opposed to parking over in that parking lot over there they don't care about it. something like that there's science behind it being more empowering to say no even though it's affirming what you're trying to do the other one's the accusation audit if you're trying to get somebody down it's getting ahead of things and going you probably think i'm just a dickhead or just a yeah. power trip security officer type of thing oh no 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 and it's starting to get take the temperature down in the in the conversation i think those things can be um, you and, be and, and 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 mike huth and and i talked about the other day there's something about there's something about looking at somebody and saying, man, I know you can kick my ass, but I'm just trying to do my job here. Yeah. There, it's, it's self-deprecating, yep. and, it, and it just lowers the – you know, um, when Jamie designed that de-escalation, I was, I was kind of talking through it, and she said – 
tell me the overall picture. Is it making the problem go away? I go, no, not really. It's really just lowering the heat. There's just not right. that much heat in it anymore. And I remember she put the picture of the oven in there, and we talked about that. That's so you're just lowering the heat. They're probably not going to be the biggest fans of Titan Security because we're still kicking them off the property. Right. But the thing is, is we've lowered the heat. There's just not that poison in it. You right. know, there's not that that adversarial. I guess that that right. piece to it. And that stuff is just. Um, it, it, it's subtle. It's just, it's so yeah. subtle because you're still saying the same stuff. Well, the other one I would see is security officers trying to, and, pol and police officers do it too, use the equation formula, A plus B equals C, yeah. meaning I ask them to leave, they're trespassing, I have a legal right to arrest them for that and put yeah. them in handcuffs. I have, and I've used this before, the Jack Daniels. It's legal for me to sit in my office yeah. and down a whole entire bottle of Jack Daniels yeah. at 8 in the morning. But is that the best and smartest thing to do? So I think breaking the thought chain of Pat and because I have the evidence or the, the, you know, the scenario to affect an arrest or use force or that type of thing doesn't mean that we should. No, and, and Pat and Oswald, the comedian, has got a great line about it. He says, you're all about the coulda. You're not all about the shoulda. Right. And the thing is, is yep. we want to be about what we should. Yeah. Right. You know, these police officers right here out out here off of Metcalf could write a speeding ticket for going four miles over the speed limit. Exactly. Probably not, probably not the best yeah, idea. Probably not the best idea. Well, and I, I think we'll take it down to the training room and start to show this kind of what we'll do is put some scenarios out there that are typical and kind of how we would like to communicate with them. I think we could do one or two in a bad situation to show the difference between the two. Before we head down there, um, one of the last things I wanted to address that's kind of a newer phenomenon over the past 10 years is the cell phone recording. Sure. That's starting to happen a lot. You go up and ask, and they start to do this. Yep. My personal philosophy on that is welcome it, expect it, yep. and, and treat every situation like you're being recorded because the likelihood is that you are. But it, what they want you to do is go, you can't film me. Yeah. But, but when you yeah, go, right, right. So, <laughs> but when you go, hey, I it, absolutely, I, yeah. I'm with you. If you want to film because it makes you feel safer, please do it. But I'm still going to need you to leave the property or kind of go through there. But that's one of the things, and I may throw that in on the scenario downstairs uh, in the training room sure. to kind of show because I, I think that piece is happening more and more, and it's a tripwire that a lot of people, cops included, fall if, into. If it, uh, it, it, it was probably in the mid 1980s that I heard my father say, if you want to come record me doing my job, go ahead. I do a good job. Right. And, and that's in the eighties. Right. You know, and I was a little kid and I remember him saying that. Right. And, and it's just watch me, right. watch me, you know, right. and, 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 and welcome it. And really the way we train it these days is just get it off the table. Meaning everybody's recording you all the time. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. Don't worry. If yeah. you're expect it. Yeah. Don't abuse. Don't cheat. Don't lie. Don't steal. You don't have anything to worry about. Nothing. You to can worry make about. mistakes. Right. You can make mistakes. Um, well, just in a summary before we hit the training room, I think the biggest key for me is tone, some empathy. How are we having that message? If we go up to somebody and go, "You need to leave now," what do we expect that right. to happen? I think how we do that is most important, and then I think we can go through some trips. Even if you do all of that stuff, and somebody still says, "Fuck you," I'm not leaving. Right. Um, we can walk through a couple of those things, but um, I think you're right. I think that's the best goal on the or once once you have made contact. My goal for the officers is on the approach as you approach. This is a person refusing to leave property, and it should not escalate any further than that. At the worst, this is going to remain a person refusing to leave property. Don't, that is the big don't drink the spoiled milk. Right. You know it's spoiled. It's just it's, don't it, do it. Don't do it. Yeah. It's not going to taste good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, um, if anybody has any questions or comments, I'd love to hear some feedback. I know there's plenty of experienced security and police officers out there that may have a tool in their trick bag that has served them well over the years. Love when you do the that. thumbnail for this, can we make it to where like I've got you by the scruff of the neck and the back of the shirt and like I'm tossing you off property? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we could with Coop. I'll do that. Okay. I'll, that's fine. I'll take the picture. Yeah, but, that's absolutely fine. Uh, well, we'll run down there and throw uh, and show a couple of these uh, on the training simulator. And uh, if anybody has any comments, questions, anything that's worked well for them, I'd uh, love to hear it. 
Hey everybody, welcome to Titan Training Room. As Ryan and I were discussing up in the studio, uh, we wanted to give some folks some training and, and, and some training tips on how to get subjects to uh, leave property. As we said earlier, this is probably our most frequent uh, issue that we deal with as security officers. And so we wanna show you how we train our folks to do so, uh, to give them a few more resources rather than just telling somebody get out, get up and leave. Uh, we wanted to show how we kind of work through those headaches. Uh, we're gonna first key on how it can go really bad, and then we're gonna key on how it can go really well. But remember what we said at the very first of video, at the very least, if this is a subject refusing to leave property, let's call that an ugly victory, and we end up having to call the cops. The last thing we wanna do is have this thing light on fire and become a use of force. Dude, hey. What are you doing, man? Hey, 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 get out of here. This is private property, you can't video record here. Get out, leave. You can't record me. You can't do that. You need to leave property. Leave property. Hey, what's your problem, man? You can't just be taking a piss out here. It's unacceptable, you can't do that. You need to leave property. Leave now. Hey, what are you, hey, back up. I told you to back up. Okay. I told you to back up. Okay, so that did not go at all how we would want it to. It escalated out of control, not just with one subject, but also with the people who were recording. So let's break it down from there. Uh, number one, um, our approach with the subject trying to get his attention, it was, it was, there was a lot of poison in it. It was gruff, it was mean, and that's not what we're looking for. Um, that, uh, it, it, you know, walking up to somebody with a softer tone, we can still accomplish the same thing. We'll point that here in a minute. Another hill we died on out there would be uh, the young ladies who were recording. Um, why? There's no need for us to fight that fight. If they want to record us, we think we do a pretty good job. So let them record us. And don't, don't even get yourself um, involved in that argument. I do think it's safe if it's for their safety. I think we, there's, there, there is some points that, to be made there uh, about them intruding on that, that interaction. They could be harmed by that uh, intoxicated subject. But for the most part, if somebody wants to record you, just let it go. Just let it go. It, 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 go ahead and consider yourself on video recording all the time anyways. And then finally, at the end, we're increasing our, our, our volume of our voice. You can tell that we're angry um, and it, it's really like the officer is escalating the situation to where the intoxicated subject turns around and really doesn't it, say anything verbal. He just, he's ready to fight. I sounded like I was ready to fight, so he's gonna come right back at me and he's ready to fight as well. We end up doing an OC deployment, which is not at all we're, we're looking for over somebody urinating in public. The rain is gonna wash that away. We don't care about that. We just want them to leave property. So now, let's give this a second look. This time we wanna good, use good de-escalation skills. We wanna be somebody who's here to help. We wanna be somebody who's not concerned about being recorded. And we wanna be somebody who's not concerned about a little bit of urine on a, on a brick and concrete building. We're here to help. We're here to get the subject off property. And if we can do so safely without things escalating, that's exactly what we're looking for. Hey buddy, how we doing? Hey man, Josh Leon with Titan. Hey. You doing okay? Hey, it looks like a doctor here. You just go to the bathroom. Hey folks. I don't think he's feeling real well. Hey, look, we're gonna film you the whole time. You can film me, that's absolutely fine. That, 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 that's fine, I just wanna make sure he's okay. I just wanna make sure. Hey man, are you not feeling good? What? Yeah, I don't think you're feeling real well, man. Is there somebody I could call for you? A friend, a relative, an Uber, it's just, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, do you have a cell phone on you I could help you with? Yeah, we, we can't have you driving, man. That's just going to be real dangerous for you. Yeah, I'll help with that. Let's get you sat down. 
Everybody, as you can see, we had two totally different outcomes there. Uh, the first one didn't go in any way how we would want it to. Uh, the second one is what we're looking for. We are looking to de-escalate situations. We don't want to get tied up on somebody recording us. It's absolutely fine for people to record us. We want to give this gentleman resources, um, resources to get home safely. He even says, I won't drive. Uh, he's not looking to do anything bad. He's had too much to drink and we want to be helpful with that. Um, as far as uh, other things that we can get kind of wrapped into, so urinating in public, folks, the rainwater is going to wash that away. So let's not worry about that. Let's make sure that we're using every resource to get this gentleman home safely. We always appreciate you guys joining us uh, on our Titan training videos and the Titan podcast. Please uh, subscribe if you get a chance and leave those comments. Let us know what you think.